Hey guys, this is Nick. Welcome to Strange Spotting. Today we're going to look at the albino Bigfoot, one of the most convincing pieces of evidence I have ever seen. Here's the full unedited clip. As is the case with most Bigfoot sightings and recordings, we don't have too much information about this clip. The author is unknown. All we know is that it was taken in Carbondale, Pennsylvania. The clip first appeared on the internet in 2008, although we don't have an exact date for when it was recorded. What's more important, in my opinion, is that there were two previous sightings reported of people seeing a white Bigfoot, roughly in the same area. The first one in 1970 in Blakesley, Monroe County, about 30 miles south of Carbondale. The second one in 1973 in Beaver County, about 200 miles from Carbondale. Another thing worth mentioning is that According to the Bigfoot Research Organization, Pennsylvania, in the ranking, is the third state after Washington and California in terms of number of reports. There aren't many elements that we can extrapolate from the author's behavior. What we know is that, as the story goes, he went outside in his backyard to look at what was causing some noises. The second thing is that the subject is not hit just once by the flashlight, but twice. Actually, at the 21st second mark, here he is, exactly here. There's no objective element, in my opinion, to tell if the person who's recording is aware of the presence of the alleged creature. So this doesn't scream hoax to me. On the other hand, the way he reacts when he sees this thing, he doesn't seem particularly scared or surprised, but it's also a matter of one and a half seconds. So there probably wasn't enough time for him to even begin to feel fear and realize what he just saw. In conclusion, I don't see anything particularly suspicious uh, about the behavior of the guy recording. This is probably the least important aspect of this video analysis, but I think it's important to mention that in any uh, cryptid video, there's always information in the setting. There's always some clue that you can get from it to understand if it's a hoax or not. But in this particular case, I don't see anything. But of course, if you have a different idea, let me know in the comments, please. Most Bigfoot videos out there involve the entire body, and there's almost always something in the surroundings that can be used for comparison. This technique is called photogrammetry. It's used to deduce body measurements and ratios to compare them to those typical of Homo sapiens, our species, that have already been defined very precisely by a scientific discipline called anthropometry. In this particular video, we don't get to see the entire body or the limbs, but there's still something that we can use, the head. What I'm gonna do is draw a line corresponding to the head length and compare it to the trunk diameter. As you can see, the head is roughly 9 tenths of the trunk. I'm going to make some estimates based on a series of assumptions. Number one, a tree trunk diameter ranging from 14 inches to 20. Number two, the subject is a human wearing a costume. Therefore, number three, according to anthropometry, his total body height is 7.5 times the head's longitudinal length. The results are nothing short of incredible. A 14 inches trunk would mean that the subject is 7.8 feet or 2.4 meters tall. A 17 inches trunk would mean a person standing at 9.5 feet 
or 2.9 meters, and at 20 inches would mean that the subject is 11.25 feet or 3.4 meters tall. These results are nothing short of absurd, and the only logical consequence is that the subject must have a different head-to-body ratio. Therefore, he can be human. There are two essential aspects to look at here, facial movements and facial proportions. The first one can help us discern between two possibilities. Either what we're looking at is a mask or it's a real face. The second one can tell us if the non-human features on display here are a result of makeup and prosthetics or if this face belongs to a different species than ours. I extracted four photograms and put them side by side. As you can see, there is clear eyelid movements here. The subject's eyes narrow visibly once hit by the flashlight as an involuntary reaction and stay that way while it turns to its right and run away, possibly due also to the emotional reaction from being caught. It's a bit harder to make out because of the clip's low resolution, but the lips and the mouth move as well. Here I've drawn two bars with uh, different colors that represent the mouth vertical length in the two different stills and then I've put them side by side to show you the difference. Based on these observations I think we can rule out the possibility of this being a mask. Now let's take a look at the facial proportions. I'll avail myself once again of anthropometry to assert a certain fact. Human faces vary in size, color, hair, etc. But the proportions between the different components of a face are the same for any human individual, male or female, who hasn't been damaged by major blunt trauma. What we need to do is put the subject's face next to that of a human and resize them to a corresponding length, and draw some horizontal lines corresponding to the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the chin. Like this. Can you see the difference? It's just blatant, in my opinion. The subject recorded in this video clip does not sport human facial proportions. There are no hard facts or numbers to use as a comparison to how the subject moves. All I can say is that it displays great speed, fluidity of motion, and great reflexes. To be precise, there's an interval of 0.85 seconds between the moment it's hit by the light and the moment it's out of the camera's field of vision. I want to stress the fact that this is my personal opinion, but I find it very hard to believe that a person wearing a cumbersome costume could move like that, and I doubt that they could have such a knee-jerk reaction if partaking in a somewhat scripted oaths. Let's recap the observations laid out in the video to reach an evidence-based conclusion. 1. The state of Pennsylvania is characterized by a great number of Bigfoot reports, and at least in two different locations the witnesses have reported seeing a white creature. 2. There are no clues of the camera holder behaving suspiciously, and 3. No signs of a staged event in the setting. Four. When using the adjacent tree trunk as a frame of reference and assuming human head-to-body ratios, the resulting height estimate is impossible. Therefore, the subject can be human. 5. The face movements rule out the possibility of this being a mask. And 6. The face proportions are incompatible with those of Homo sapiens. 7. The speed and fluidity of movement is inconsistent with a costume, and the fast reflexes suggest that this is not a hoax. In light of these findings, I deem the Pennsylvania White Bigfoot clip very plausible and compelling video evidence of an undiscovered great ape species. According to this conclusion, I can speculate that the recurrence of white specimens in eyewitness reports might indicate a small population of Sasquatch in the surrounding forests with a prevalence of this genetic trait. If you made it this far, you might consider subscribing to this channel for more content like this and leaving a comment. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.